Hello, this is Jack Vanderpaul from Navic Atlantic. I'm the team lead for the SCAP Compliance Checker, and in this video, I'm going to provide you with a brief background on the Security Content Automation Protocol, or SCAP, and a quick introduction into the SCAP Compliance Checker application. This is the first of a series of short videos designed to help our users get up to speed and running with SCC. The remainder of the videos in this series will be hands on demonstrations using the SCC application. Well, here's an outline of what we're going to talk about, just basically an SCAP introduction. Um, what is SCAP? And then we'll briefly walk through each one of the specifications that we're interested in, um, XCCDF and OVAL and OSIL, um, and really kind of why we're going to talk about understanding those is to make it uh, easier to understand why SCAP applications work the way they do and to help you understand um, the results that come out of SCAP validated applications. Then we'll do a demonstration, actually not a demonstration of SCAP compliance checker. We're just going to look at the GUI um, and then we'll view a sample report. Demonstrations will be coming in, in subsequent videos. So what is SCAP? Security Content Automation Protocol. It's pronounced SCAP, although you may have heard other people pronounce it SCAP. Um, in this video and the series of videos we're going to do, we're going to try to stick with the uh, with the NIST approved method of SCAP, although I may make mistakes as we go, so my apologies. It was created by a US government consortium of, of uh, experts and private industry experts. We had NIST and the NSA and DISA and numerous um, commercial companies. Uh, the first, first version was published back in 2009, and the current version is at 1.3, um, which is really where content and tools are, are at right now. Version 2.0 is in development, um, so it's actively maintained um, and advancing. Um, SCAP is a collection of XML specifications, primarily used for writing policy documents and for creating content to be used to perform automated compliance checks using SCAP validated tools. Um, examples of policy documents would be like the DISA STIGs, the actual manual, and the DISA STIG SCAP benchmarks. Oh, there was the SCAP thing. I told you I was going to do it. SCAP benchmarks. Uh, we'll go. Uh, here's an overview to kind of look in a graphical representation of pretty much what I just said. But um, here's the SCAP content authors. Um, they're really just human beings, you know, software developers and uh, and policy writing um, teams using XML editors or um, internally created applications. There are no really commercially available SCAP authoring applications right now. Um, for the most part, it's uh, XML editors and other um, utilities. And the end product being um, XML documents in the SCAP formats. Um, and those can be transformed and viewed um, in things like a web browser, like you do with the, the STIG manual. Or the content can be then published into benchmarks. Um, it can be then ingested by SCAP validated tools, like the SCAP compliance checker. Um, and then those tools can perform reviews and query the operating systems or applications of the target systems and create compliance reports. Um, there are XML documents that are mandated to be in a very specific format um, using the SCAP specifications, and those are for interoperability. And then those results can then in turn be um, parsed and read into other applications. Um, they could create enterprise-wide compliance databases um, or other portals. So they. SCAP specifications themselves, it's a collection of open source XML specifications. And there is a whole acronym soup below. Um, we'll go through them one by one, and then in subsequent slides, I'll dig into them a little bit deeper. But this is very going to be a very high level uh, presentation for learning all about these specifications. Um, we may go into a content authoring um, tutorial as a, in a much later video. Um, XCCDF is the Extensible Configuration Checklist Description Format. Um, at a high level, it's policy. So if you want to write um, the DISA STIG or whatever um, policy document for your agency, um, XCCDF would be the way to go. Um, and then OVAL is the Open Vulnerability and Assessment Language. It's the way to do the automated checks against operating systems and applications. It's how you query the system um, to get the, the state of, of the configuration. And OSIL is an open checklist interactive language. It's not as uh, commonly used right now, but it is if you have a, a policy requirement that cannot be programmatically um, performed. If you need to interview somebody and ask a, an actual question, 
um, OSOL is the way to go. And then the common platform enumeration, common configuration enumeration, and common vulnerability enumeration are just common ways of identifying um, things so that they can be, um, so that all the applications sharing the data know what they're talking about. So there's a certain way to indicate Windows 10, for example. And there's a certain way to mark password length, which would be in CCE. And there's a certain way to label a certain buffer overflow in a CVE reference. So those are just um, ID marking so that uh, different applications can share data and they're all on the same page. So we'll start at the ground level of, of what X, X, SCAP is built on. And it's built all in XML. Um, and many people who are watching this may already have a lot of knowledge of XML, and my apologies. Um, this may seem very basic, but we'll start from there. So XML is a markup language that defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human-readable and machine-readable. Um, some may beg to differ on the human readability of it. You can read it. Most people choose not to. Um, but it's definitely machine-readable. Um, and in layman's terms, it's a text file with tags, so you can indicate when a data field starts and ends. Um, below is a, is a small extract of a Windows 10 oval document. You can see the beginning and end tags of like definition, and metadata, and title, um, so that tools that parse this know exactly what the field is, what data type it is, and, and where it begins and ends. So XCCDF has an overview. It's the Extensible Configuration Checklist Description Format. And once again, it's policy. And policy kind of drills down. You can have profiles and groups and rules. And then those rules can point to external checking so, um, languages, such as OVAL or OSIL. And the rules can be grouped within groups. Perfect thing to group them with. And then rules or groups can be put into profiles. So the requirements for a classified system or a public system or a sensitive system might be slightly different. Um, but they all can be within the same policy document. And you can choose a different profile to perform automated compliance checking against. Um, the documents can also be transformed into prose documents, such as the DISSTIG manual. So here is a, an example from the DISSTIG, just some raw XCCDF XML. Um, lots of tags, uh, lots of fields, lots of, lots of data. So there's version fields and title fields and description fields, and then there's um, ident system references so we can have vulnerability IDs and things. And this is all just for policy, though. And then if we transform that, here are the same, same data elements, but displayed in a much more human-readable format and printable and uh, more of what we're expecting in a DISSTIG manual to look like. And I'm not sure if I defined it earlier, but a DISSTIG, if you're not aware, is a security technical implementation guide. So speaking of STIGs and the STIG manual versus SCAP benchmarks, common question that we have is people um, try to install the STIG manuals as part of an, as an SCAP benchmark in, in tools like SCC. And STIG manuals are really just that. But consider the word manual as, as in quotes. They are standalone XCCDF policy documents. They don't have any automation capabilities in them. So they only can be used as manual interview type questions. There's an example here and where you can download it from. Um, and correlating to that is the SCAP benchmark. It contains XCCDF, which has the policy, but it also contains OVAL um, and is designed to work with SCAP validated tools and perform automated tests. There are fewer SCAP benchmarks published by DISA than there are STIG manuals, which is why the common question um, occurs. So if it's a manual, it is just manual. If it's a, if it's a benchmark, then it, the SCAP benchmark, then you can use it in an SCAP validated tool. And here is that same XCCDF rule in an SCAP benchmark. The key thing that's different, all the other, most of the other data points are exactly the same, but at the bottom of this one, there happens to be a reference to an oval definition. And there's a long name prefix there, but this is definition 69. And it is in the Windows 10 benchmark oval document. Speaking of oval, we will dive into it. Um, once again, at a very high level, if you're interested in writing content in oval, um, there's a lot more information that you're going to want to learn about. Uh, we can 
we can share that in a later slide, or you can contact our team for additional information. Open vulnerability and assessment language contains automated checks. It's really a complex XML programming language with uh, different capabilities depending on the version of Oval. Hundreds of different platform specific tests can be used and they can be combined. You can take data from one Oval test, manipulate it and ingest that into another Oval test so that you can create very complex um, checks that can be performed. These tests can also be um, anded and ORed together in a binary tree to determine whether the system is compliant or not with, with policy. Some examples here on Windows is a registry test, and on Linux there's an RPM info test, on Mac authorization DB, on Solaris there's a package test. So each platform has dozens of platform specific um, oval tests, and there's some um, independent ones too that are cross-platform. And then SCAP validated tools really go out to the target system and gather system data and then perform tests using oval content. So SCAP validated tools, the, their bread and butter is really an oval. The majority of the work is done using oval. And here, I will call it a, a simple oval example. And this is one of the challenges with SCAP is that oval is a very powerful language, but it's also very um, labor intensive to create. So this is what is required to perform one registry test. So there is a definition, a test, an object, and a state. Um, we'll walk through each one of these. So the definition is really just like a description because Oval can actually stand alone. Um, but for SCAP, it works with XCCDF. So some of this data is kind of redundant to the XCCDF document. Um, and then the definitions point to tests, test or test. And this example, it just points to a single test called 6900. And then that test has an object and a state. And the object is really telling the SCAP validator tool what to go gather from the target system. And on this one, it's a registry object. And we're going to go gather the software policies, Microsoft Windows personalization, no lock screen slideshow um, value. And then the state is really saying, what does that value need to be? So in this example, it's a, looking to be a regd word of a data type int and a number, number numeric value of one. So if it found anything that wasn't a regd word and or of the value one, it would return false. So OSL, we'll do even a higher overview in OSL. OSL is, like I mentioned, is a manual interview. You can create standalone OSL documents or part of an SCAP content. It's not really currently implemented in any content from DISA, and it is not as widely used in the field. Um, it could be in the future used as a replacement for STIG manual interview questions currently performed by the STIG viewer. So the, um, the XCCDF document, instead of pointing to an oval check, would then point to an OSL check, and the SCAP validator tool, such as SCC, would display that question um, along with types of answers or data, like a true or false or ABC answers or a data entry field. And then the, the pass fail would, would be comp, or computed as part of OSL and then rolled back up into XCCDF. And a quick, quick overview of our SCAP compliance tracker application. It is a NIWIC, which was a formerly SPAOR Atlantic developed application. Um, it's SCAP 1.2 validated. And when SCAP 1.3 validation becomes available, we are going to uh, get validated as soon as possible. We claim we are SCAP 1.3 capable, uh, and as soon as we can get validated, we will. Um, we were SCAP 1.0 validated years ago as well. Um, it supports most common operating systems that are in the field, current versions of Windows and Red Hat and Ubuntu and SUSE and Oracle Linux and Solaris and Mac, Cisco iOS and iOS XE. Um, it has native binaries per oper operating system and architecture with no runtime dependencies, such as Java. It has graphical user interfaces on most platforms. And in this scenario, really it has, it has a user interface of a GUI interface on everything but Solaris. And it has command line interfaces on every operating system. And you can do remote scanning from Windows to Linux, Solaris, Mac, or Cisco iOS. You can also do remote scanning from Linux or Mac to the same collection of operating systems. Um, you cannot scan Windows from Linux. 
um, or Mac. For scanning windows, it's just windows to windows scanning. Uh, we have a, another method via WMI, um, which we'll discuss at a later slide, or later set of slides, I should say. It was first released back in 2009, so we've been doing this for quite some time. Um, our current production version that you may have right now is 531, and depending on when you view this video, we're going to be talking about version 5.4, which we're going to be releasing um, in the next couple weeks from when I recorded this video. So version 5.4 will be used for all the remainder of the tutorials. And here's what our application looks like on Windows. It looks essentially the same on Linux and on Mac. This is the graphical user interface, obviously. Um, it lists all of the content that you could scan with, and it lists the, the type of scans you could perform. Um, and then we'll look at what would happen if we did a local scan of SCC of that same XCCDF rule that we, we talked about showing the STIG manual. So here's what our report happens to look like. It's just an HTML output. So the SCAP compliance checker and all SCAP validator tools really don't have anything hard coded into them. So all of this data, except for the left column where we really know what the fields are, all of the data comes fed in via the SCAP content. So every single description and fixed text and severity and all of the references and the titles, everything is from content. And then um, here is the oval portion of that same check. This is really all in one, H one HTML report, but it wouldn't fit on one slide. So here's the second slide. And this shows really what the oval test was. And we kind of talked about what the requirements were and the object and the state. And the key thing that, S that SCC collected at the bottom of the slide, the collected item properties. So we went out and queried the operating system and we found that the key and hive key and name were there and the value was a reg D word and it was a value of one. So this returned true, uh, which then rolls up from oval being true to an XCCDF status of pass. And an oval result of false would roll up an XCCDF status of fail. And then for references on this, like I said this is a very high level presentation just to give you some groundwork of SCAP and SCC. For more information, you can go view our website at nywickatlantic.navy.mil slash SCAP. Um, we hope, hope you enjoyed this and hope we find it useful. And uh, please watch some subsequent videos. Thank you very much for your time.